So going back over to the chart right there, nope, not that one, uh, this one, the 1260 days beginning at the midpoint of the week is what was given to Daniel as the rule of the prince, i.e. the time period, the 42 months, three and a half years, 1260 days, time, times and a half a time. They all say the same thing, same, same time frame. And they're given to Daniel specifically beginning at the midpoint, which is the second half of the 70th week. So follow me for a moment. If that was given by uh, given by the angel to Daniel, and then there's some other details where we see in this chart the 1290 days until the destruction of the prince, which is a month, a prophetic month after, so 30 days after the 1260 days, and then tacked on the end of that, we have an extra 45 days after the 30 days, which equals from the midpoint 1335 days until when? The rule of Christ and the ushering in of his kingdom. So notice, if we follow Daniel's timing using the days, which were specifically given him, then how can Jesus say that no man knows the day of his coming? Are you following what I'm saying here? If the coming, the second coming of Christ, is the time when he ushers in the kingdom, then no, we're not in the dark. We absolutely can know the day of his return, or I should say at least the day when the kingdom, when the rule of the prince ends, which is at 1260 days and we can know the day when he will meet his destruction at the battle of armageddon which is yeshua returning from heaven with the armies clothed in white and riding on white horses in the book of revelation around chapter uh, 16 17 18 19 20 somewhere in that uh, range we can know that and according to daniel we can know when the rule of christ will be set up as his in the millennial kingdom which is 1335 days so how can yeshua say that no one knows the day of the hour ah let's go back to guzik and pick up the um discussion is it what's he mean what does he mean when he say it is it at an unexpected hour or is it positively predicted we're talking about the return of christ and then he asked a second kind of cryptic bullet point is it business as usual or worldwide cataclysm because remember Yeshua said that as it was in the days of Noah, what are people doing in the days of Noah? Eating, drinking, marrying, giving marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, until the day. So if Antichrist is on the scene unleashing his fury and there's tribulation and there's distress and there's earthquakes and there's famines and there's pestilence and there's intense tribulation, how can that be business as usual? How can that be Eating and drinking and marrying, giving in marriage, peace, peace, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, okay, again, we're working with this idea that there could be and likely is two aspects to Jesus' second coming. And one of those aspects is a book in that we're going to call Rapture. So I'll show you another slide in a moment. And the other aspect is a book in that we're going to call Second Coming. And then his final uh, bullet point, <coughs> excuse me. Is it, and watch this, he, he jumps headlong into it, is it meeting him in the air like 1 Thessalonians 4? Or is he coming with the, with the saints in Zechariah 14, 5? So here is now his answer to his own fake dilemma. He says, William Barclay describes, this is Guzik speaking, one aspect of the difficulty here, that the it, the second coming of Christ, is actually in two sections, and they seem to contradict each other. Each other. The first verses, verses 32 to 35 of Matthew 24, seem to indicate that as a man can tell by the signs of nature when summer is is on the way so he can also tell by the signs of the world when the second coming is on the way remember yeshua said it'll happen like a thief in the night but wait a minute there are two people groups when we get to paul's thessalonian letters we're going to see this more um more sharply that there are people who are of the average uh, uh, they're, they're unbelievers. They're the weeds. They're of the world. They're not looking for the second coming. So the, for, for them, primarily the second coming will come like a thief in the night. But for those of us who are believers, who are the <clears throat> the the um, wheat in the Yeshua's Matthew 13 parable, the wheat and tares, we're the believers. Paul says that, that they will not that day, and he's speaking of the second coming, the parousia in the Greek, that day will not overtake us like a thief in the night. So it will come like a thief in the night, but only for those who are not believers, only for those who are not looking. 
So, continuing with Guzik, he says, the second section of verses in Matthew 24, 36-41, says quite definitely that no one knows the time of the second coming, not the angels, not even Jesus himself, but only God. And again, going to that uh, slice of uh, that passage here, the chart, in Daniel. Daniel was given that starting at the midpoint of the week, there'd be 1260 days from the midpoint to the rule of the prince, right? How long is 1260 days? We're talking about prophetic years, by the way. We're not talking about normal Gregorian calendar days that we would see on our calendar, but we have to go back to ancient Israel's calendar, which was a lunisolar calendar, that was charted off by where the months were basically 30 days, so what we call a biblical month or a prophetic month. So each month had 30 days, not like today where we have alternate 30 and 31. So that's where we get the 1260 days, 42 months, uh, three and a half years, time, times, and half a time. Well, if Yeshua said to his disciples in Matthew, Mark, and Luke that he himself didn't know the day or the hour, not the angels, not the Son of Man, well then, obviously, and I hope you're seeing this, okay, so just follow along with me. I am not date setting. I'm not saying that, hey, guess what, everybody? I have figured out the one and only way to absolutely know for sure when Jesus is returning, and I've got it. No. What I am saying is that if we take the language at face value, then Daniel was given the day of Yeshua's return, which would be at the end of the 70th week, 45, uh, 75 days after the end of the 70th week. So the three and a half years runs its course in the 1260 days. That's when Antichrist has his time to persecute people. And so the tribulation could be exactly three and a half years long, but I don't believe it will be. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll deal with that a little bit later on. I, it's going to be cut short by an event and by a sign. But at least he's been given 1260 days, 42 months to have his dominion, have his kind of free reign on planet Earth. The entire tribulation period, I don't believe, will last that long. It'll be actual cut short. The days will be cut short. But the point I'm trying to highlight is that Daniel was given through an angel, no less, right? Remember, Jesus said, no one knows, not the angels in heaven, not the Son of Man. So Jesus included himself as not knowing, and he definitely marked out the angels. But wait a minute, an angel in the book of Daniel knew. How is it that that angel in the book of Daniel knew when Jesus was going to come back? But Jesus himself says that no one knows, not even the angels, not even I know. I don't even know. Only, only Papa knows. How is that working out, right? That's where we're trying to resolve this seeming contradiction. In the end, we're going to find it's not a contradiction because there is a way to resolve the 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 uh, seeming contradiction like how can we know exactly to the day like 1260 1290 1335 how can we know to the day and yet jesus says no one knows the day not the angels not even i myself but only my father and uh this uh guzik says uh and that this coming will come upon men with the suddenness of a rainstorm out of a blue sky okay here's the answer to the dilemma according to um uh, guzik um just go like that because it's easier to, to follow the highlights. He says, the dilemma is resolved by seeing that there are actually two second comings. Now, let me pause. This language of two second comings is a bit controversial for some Christians. There are those in the pre-wrath camp that I hold to who argue and say two comings is not described in the Bible. There's only one what we call Greek word parousia. Some people say parousia. P-A-R-O-U-S-I-A. Parousia. We'll see this in a moment when we look at Tim Haig's notes. This parousia is the coming of Messiah that's foretold in the Old Testament. Right? Daniel chapter 7. He's watching the visions, and one like the Son of Man, coming on the clouds, approaches the Ancient of Days. And there's only one of those events that's given. There's not two. Likewise, when you read through the New Testament passages, Yeshua describes his return in singular language, the coming. Even the disciples asking the question in Matthew chapter 24 at the very beginning, starting in verse 3, said, What is the sign of the end of the age, the sign of your coming? singular end of the end of the age i'll just turn to it in case you don't remember so that we can see this uh jump right back up to the top here uh right here disciples ask us master tell us when will these things happen right yeshua describes the destruction of the temple and the overturning of all the stones when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your what your coming 
and of the end of the age. So Matthew 24, let me just click on the number, the verse number, open up this, click uh, verse three, go to the Greek. And then from here, if I scroll back down to that same word, this is an easier way to see it. Then I'll get myself in trouble. When will it happen and what will be the sign of your, here we go. Now we can see it right here. The sign of your coming. Um, so now we can see all the words there. We have a parousias in the Greek. We have a noun genitive feminine singular. You can see right there. That's that, that, that way I don't have to guess. So a noun in the genitive form, again, normally a, a verb, but playing the part of a noun now. A noun in the genitive form, uh, feminine singular. And the whole point of looking this Greek word up is that you're, I'm showing you that it's in the singular, which means that when Guzik says um, the dilemma is resolved by saying that there are actually two second comings, this is a bit controversial to say that there are two comings because there's nowhere in the New Testament where the word prosia is referred to in the plural, at least if I can remember, um, to refer to Yeshua coming twice to planet Earth. So instead, let's keep reading this and I'll show you a, a, a bit of a better way to resolve this. He says, there are two comings. One is on the air, is in the air for the church commonly known, uh, Guzik says, as the rapture and the other is to the world coming with the, ch with the church commonly known as the second coming of Jesus. So now let me jump to another slide here. And we kind of hinted at this earlier. So we're talking about two events that are described by some people as two comings, two parousias, but I think that the better way to look at this event is one single event, but two bookends. One event known as the return of Christ or the second coming of Christ, but has these two bookends or aspects to it, meaning that there's a duration. It's not just one single um, instantaneous event where Yeshua drops down to planet Earth, snatches us up to be in the clouds, and then we go up for a brief moment, catch our breath, get our new bodies, and, and then plunge right back down to planet Earth again for him to execute all of his second coming judgment, etc., etc. I believe that there truly is a rapture part, which is the first bookend on the left side of any chart that you're going to be looking at. That would be rapture. That happens where we go, that's where we go up to meet Messiah in the air. We get our resurrected bodies. If you are dead, then you're raised from the dead first. Remember Paul talked about in both uh, Corinthians as well as in the uh, Thessalonians that the dead in Christ will be raised first. In the, in the Corinthians passage, he describes that this is going to be this mystery where the um, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So we've got the rapture taking place where the believers go up to meet the Lord in the air. That's the first bookend. And then there's this distance between the a time frame a chronology of events that allows for there to be a distance between the rapture and the second coming which in which chart in this chart right here with the pre classic pre-trib notice that the time distance between the chronology whatever the time the distance between the rapture on the far left of your screen where the two black and white arrow the black and white arrow are kissing each other and the black arrow pointing down on the far right of your screen where it says second coming. Notice the time frame is a full seven years. That's what this uh, uh, teaching suggests. The, the view that I hold to the pre-wrath has a shorter time frame. Notice the two black and white, the black and white, the black and the white arrow known as pre-wrath after are kissing each other about halfway through the second half of the 70th week known as pre-wrath rapture and then there's the god's wrath slice which is uh, probably i mean i don't know half of the three and a half years so you know a year and uh, and some time and then at the far right it doesn't show the arrow coming back down but it would be there if, if i were to alter this chart a little bit that's where we would have the true second coming at the far right and then in this particular chart we still have the seven year slice known as god's wrath according to post-trib but the second coming in the post-trib rapture the pr yeah kiss each other at the farthest right, meaning there's absolutely no time elapsed between these two, what I'm calling bookends. So they happen basically, they overlap with one another simultaneously. But going back to this chart, I believe there are two events. There's rapture on the left in the blue, and there's second coming on the right. And I don't call these two second comings. I like the name of this chart where it says two events, rapture and second coming. And I'll just read the chart now for you briefly. In the rapture, we have the translation of the believers. So we go up. The saints go to heaven. The earth is not judged. The rapture is imminent. I would disagree with the word imminent there 
up until a point when all the signs have exhausted themselves and the tribulation has been cut short, then the rapture is imminent. But until that point comes time, I'm not going to use the word imminency. I'm going to use the word expectancy or urgency. Either one fits my theology and what I believe the Bible actually teaches. Imminency is not truly a, um, uh, the right word to use until we get well into the tribulation and then you should have said after the tribulation of those days then the sun will be dark and the moon will be will not shine it'll turn to blood the stars will fall from the sky there'll be a great earthquake things like that and then they'll see the sign of the son of man in the sky etc etc so only then will there be imminency after the what um john calls in revelation the sixth seal is broken per revelation chapter six so we've got imminent looking at this chapter uh, this chart on the rapture I'm on, I'm on the left side of the chart for those of you who are looking at this chart with me um the rapture affects believers only the rapture is before the day of the of the day of wrath the, the rapture has no reference to satan the rapture is where jesus comes in the air the rapture is where he comes for capital f-o-r his bride the rapture only is that only the saints see him i don't know if i fully agree with that only the saints see him during the rapture i think everybody on earth will actually see him but only the only the saints will actually be caught up but i think the wicked will actually see him then but i can't be dogmatic there uh, i'll tell you why uh, when we get to rapture topic uh next time uh and then finally on the fire uh, the bottom of this chart on the left side under rapture we have the tribulation begins with the rapture so i do believe that the rapture triggers it says tribulation here but instead of saying tribulation i believe that the rapture triggers the wrath of god so this is going to be an important distinction that i make i'm not getting into it right now but according to the pre-trib uh rapture the tribulation and the wrath of god are the same event and they run the entire seven years and therefore the tribulation is triggered by the rapture i believe in that some of that terminology that one triggers another but i don't call the time frame of the seven years tribulation so when we look at the second side of this chart where it says second coming by contrast to many of the things i just read on the left side look what happens at the second coming there's no translation involved right the, tri the saints don't go up the saints instead are going the opposite direction they are returning to the earth right big difference the earth is judged right as opposed to not judged uh, his return is not imminent, and this is a good point to highlight on that Daniel indeed was given that there are 1260 days from the midpoint to the end of the of the kind of the the um uh, the era of the Antichrist, not his destruction, but at least the era, his rule is at least for 42 months, and there's three and a half years until the uh, bringing in of uh, or 30 days after that, 1290 days where we finally do have the destruction of the of, of the antichrist right he he and the um false prophet are thrown alive into lake of fire etc cetera, etc cetera. that type of language given to us in the book of revelation around chapter 20 or so 19 or 20 and then the um yeshua returns to set up his second kingdom his second kingdom his his well his his millennial kingdom the, the physical kingdom at the end of the 1335 days given to the book of daniel so based on those days that were given by an angel in the book of daniel even though yeshua said no one knows not even the angels of heaven so this instantly tells us that i believe that there are two events that or two bookends that we must be dealing with here so we're talking about who's taken and who's left well we're getting to that all right i'm working my way towards that well if the event is not imminent that means it must be known according to the book of daniel and then look it affects all men on earth that's the taken and left concept who's taken well we're, we're working towards that so just follow with me um the second coming affects all men on earth and the second coming concludes the day of wrath or it wraps up the the, the day uh the the 70th week of daniel the final seven years that's where the tw the um seven years come to an end with the second coming right around the either the the um 1260 days or the 1290 days or the 1335 either way you're still looking at a diff a time difference between um one and 75 days which isn't a lot of time um the second coming is where satan is bound just before the physical millennium right we're talking revelation chapter 20 now uh the second coming is where jesus comes to the earth right now we're thinking about zechariah chapter 14 language where yeshua's i'm sorry zechariah chapter 12 or 13 or 14 somewhere around there 12 13 14 i think it actually is 14 where his feet 
touch the Mount of Olives, it splits in two, etc., etc., all that language. In uh, Revelation, the Lamb is seen standing on Mount Zion with 144,000. That's right around chapter 16, 17, 18, somewhere in that range. Um, so we're talking about Yeshua physically coming to earth in the second coming as opposed to him merely meeting us in the air and not touching down during the rapture. See the difference? Uh, and in the second coming, he comes with, capital W-I-T-H, as opposed to coming for in the rapture. He comes back with us instead of for us in the second coming. Uh, again, read the book of Revelation around chapter uh, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then in the second coming, every eye will see him according to language that shows up in other places. Um, and then in the millennium, the millennium begins in, at the second coming. So that's the differences between what Guzik just called two comings, but I'm saying it's not best to use the word two comings, two parousias, like we looked at the Greek word parousia or parousia. I would say it would be better to describe it as two events of one coming. So I'm using the bookend principle where we've got kind of like an encyclopedia stack of books and we've got a through z and the a in my little analogy is the rapture and the z is the second coming 